Now we've been talking about silver for some time on this program. In fact, back when silver was $14, $15 an ounce, the crazy thing is I know that the silver price on paper, it's really high. And when we look at it compared to all other investments, it's just dominating them all. There is nothing that has performed like silver in 2020. Now the thing is, the real price of silver is closer to $33 an ounce, at least for silver eagles. You probably can get some you know, generic rounds or something a little bit cheaper, but it's definitely a very high premium compared to the paper price. If anything, we may be approaching a time when that entire paper market scheme comes crumbling down. The COMEX seems to be having a terrible time keeping this whole system, this whole market under wraps. As we've covered previously, the COMEX has had record delivery for gold products and this is a system that they have utilized to suppress the price by, you know, naked short selling, pretending to have silver they don't have. But really, the real winner this year has been silver. Deutsche Bank, they just covered, and they compiled a list of investments and their year-to-date performance. Now, let's start with silver has risen 35% in July. This is the best month going back to December 1979, and the dollar, it had its worst for the last 10 years. Now, back in the 70s, we saw silver got really carried away. And, you know, all the press coverage has been focused on what's going on in the stock market. The truth be told, the top five companies in the S&P 500, they've had strong performance. They're up 35%. The bottom 495 companies, they're still negative year to date. Now, the thing is, the top performer of this year has been silver. The second best performing asset among all asset classes has been gold. And the NASDAQ, it came in at number three. Now everybody seems to be focused on what's going on in the stock market. I mean, it's very clear we're in a bubble. We've never seen such financial manipulation, at least in our lifetimes. So the US dollar spot index, it fell by the most in a single month since September 2010. That was around the last time we saw precious metals take off. We covered numerous times the rise in precious metals, it really comes in when we see the impacts of money printing. You know, the last time around they were assuming we were gonna have strong inflation. This time around, a lot of the large market analysts they're expecting we're gonna actually have the inflation. And one thing that's interesting is whenever the Federal Reserve say that they plan to have inflation run hot, it typically means it's because inflation is going to run hot. The money printing has been unlike anything we've ever seen before. I mean, they're printing like there's no tomorrow. So silver rallied 34% in July, and that pushed it right to the top of Deutsche Bank's leaderboard with a 36.6% .6 advance. Gold also had a strong month, not quite as strong as silver, but it climbed 10.9%. This is the biggest monthly gain since February 2016. Now gold has been on quite a ride for the past couple of years. It's only now that we see silver beginning to wake up. The interesting thing is that I would not say animal spirits are present yet. I believe they're building. We're getting a lot of excitement in silver. But it's been a good month for commodities all around. Copper has climbed 5.7%, Brent has climbed 5.2%, and the broader commodity index it gained 4.1%. Now for the month of July, when you look at this list compiled by Deutsche Bank, silver has just demolished everything in its path. And you know, doing this kind of work and the type of program we run, very frequently people have been coming you know, it's been a couple of years, they've been explaining that silver will never do anything, it will never be worth anything, it's only going to drop in value. I mean, what was that, that Harry Dent explaining that gold was going to go down to like $6 or something? Essentially, whenever you see the money printing begin, that's when you see precious metals begin to rise. It's always the quantitative easing, and the quantitative easing this time around, it's really broken the mold. Now, year to date, silver also stands out as the best performing asset, far exceeding even the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, even the things that the Federal Reserve has been purchasing have not performed as well as silver. Now we see what's going on at China's largest banks. Obviously they're getting concerned about the performance of precious metals. At the very bottom of the list we see the banks from the zone. 
we know that they have a really weak banking sector. They're also in the midst of the worst economic crisis in their history. The truth is the loan losses, they're coming in as we speak. I know there are some that are suggesting that silver has spent everything it has to get here, but I think it's an important point when you look out at the real price of silver right now. There is a lack of supply. Even the U.S. Mint is unable to keep up with demand and to produce their coins like they usually do. Globally, I think we're reaching a stage of lost faith in fiat currencies. And why not? It's ridiculous what they're doing. And it doesn't benefit everyone equally. It is benefiting the wealthy. It's benefiting the elite. And they're the ones that complain about some of these programs while benefiting from them themselves. Now, there was one bank that was suggesting that maybe we won't see as hard of inflation until the elite, until the rich begin circulating some of this currency, because a lot of that freshly printed money, a lot of those backdoor deals, we look at what's going on with TikTok and Microsoft, and everybody earlier in the year were suggesting that Trump and the man behind Microsoft happen to be enemies. They're secretly enemies, but honestly, they're secretly friends. That's why he's in talks with the CEO of Microsoft to make sure that TikTok is handed over to Microsoft. They say the company's worth like 50 billion, and they're also requiring that a tribute be paid to DC. So at this point, we're seeing a huge consolidation of power by the world's elite. All of the largest companies that existed in the US before this crisis have only grown exponentially. Those top five stocks, they've gained 35% in the middle of the worst depression in U.S. history. We've had the largest amount of job losses, and you look out at what's going on with Amazon, like it wasn't a problem before this crisis. Now, it's a juggernaut leading to a rush of bankrupt brick-and-mortar retailers. The real loser in this crisis has been small business. I know there are some people acting like everything is fine, everything's going to come roaring back, but honestly, this is the greatest transition of power the world has ever seen. The elite, the dark, hidden hand that really operates this world has taken control of the U.S. economy. They've grown enormously rich. I mean, we see the, the favors handed out to companies like Kodak. We see the backdoor deals among their top executives before this went through. They're essentially handing over all of these handouts to these companies, making them richer, helping out companies like Boeing, these airlines. And we're seeing small business failures like you wouldn't believe. I just don't know how we recover from this. How do we end up where we already had empty main streets all across this nation before this crisis and think that somehow we're going to snap our fingers and they're going to be filled with thriving businesses once again? Why do you think they're in such a rush to come to an agreement about more stimulus payments? Because that little boost in retail sales, it was only temporary. It was not the beginnings of a V-shaped recovery. They're talking about we're about to see 20% GDP growth. It's a big club. And this big club has amassed so much power, so much human and material resources throughout this crisis. They've really eliminated people's ability to defend themselves because a well-funded, a wealthy middle class in the United States is probably the largest obstacle to their takeover. At the end of this all, I mean, we are seeing surveys suggesting that small business owners are currently looking for full-time work. That's really the American dream in my eyes. It's small business ownership, entrepreneurship. That's the reason that people cross oceans to make it to the United States because they no longer need to be an employee. They can come here and build a business and you know everyone is worried about what they're gonna do on the other side when they get control, what they're gonna do to businesses in America and wake up and smell the coffee because we are undone. But of course, we knew this was coming. It's such a painful subject that people are not willing to even acknowledge it until it is staring them in the face. I thank you guys for stopping by and joining us as always, stay safe.